My name is James Williams Jr. This is part two. Before I was totally fucking interrupted by a jackass. This shit keeps happening. They know the night that every night at the same time that I record. And it's the same asshole every fucking time. Yes, I'm talking about my mother. Because, you know, you can't keep being stupid all the fucking time. God damn. Anyway, as I was saying, these motherfucking things right here is the be-all of all bad ideas when it comes to relationships. And you are so obsessed or obsessed or infatuated with your lover's cell phone, then you don't need to be in a relationship. Because these things can end up fucking your relationship up even if your lover hasn't done anything with anyone at any time, at any place, at all. And you're going to end your relationship over something that you've read. You may have read it wrong and they may have just been flirting and you're going to take the shot out of the way. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. Ain't nothing wrong with being cautious. But the way I see it, you good until I catch you. Because just because you flirting don't mean you fucking. But I'm going I'm to be straight, you know, if you fucking cheating on me. Woman up. Tell me. I can go. You know, be honest about this shit. Don't sit there and leave me hanging. Well, I love you, but your dick game's not good. Or your tongue game's not good. And it's too small. Or I don't really want to be with you anymore. Be fucking honest. You ain't got to troll through my shit because you're never going to get the code to the motherfucker. You're not going to get the code to my phone because it's my phone. I can show you if you want to ask. I'm not going to delete the shit because I'm stupid and don't know how. Simple as that. Oh, you said you're going to do what? I'm in a bunch of groups on Facebook. So did you guys know uh, there's naughty girl something or another and it... it there's a bunch of them motherfuckers. I'm in there. I flirt with these broads all the fucking time. Because in all honesty, one, I'm never going to go to Vancouver, Canada, because I don't have any money, to go meet these broads. If I had the money to go meet these broads, I would damn sure not let anybody know on the phone that I would be coming to meet them. You know, at least not by texting. I go ahead and call and talk, because, you know, that's something that you young people don't know fucking how to do. And two, you know, one, as poor as I am, my dick game better be good. Because these beautiful women that I be flirting with on this goddamn shit wouldn't give me the fucking time of day. Look at my face. They would look dead at my face and be like, you know what, James? You need to put this bag over your head. Because you're an ugly motherfucker. And that's cool. I'll put a bag on my head. No big deal. You know, I never said I was pretty. I never said I was handsome. I'm barely all right, you know. But that's just the way that when I was into certain girls, that's the things that they said to me. And those things stick with you. Even if you're not ugly, if someone tells you you're ugly that one time, that one fucking time, especially for somebody that you think is, like, beautiful as fuck, that one person will fuck you for your life, for the rest of your life, when they say, you're an ugly motherfucker. You don't know how many girls have told me that I was ugly. You don't know how many times that has set me back in life towards girls. Because I believe that shit. And then something happened. I burnt off my fucking face. So as ugly as I am, I was much worse. You no. Know, and I am not ashamed to show it. I'm not ashamed to tell it. You know. Whereas I'm not the best looking man on the planet. Never have been, never will be. But I have been worse than what I am right now. In this moment. Way, way back in the day. Yeah, when I burnt off my face. Don't look that bad. Because pictures don't seem to do it justice. But when I got all that video and was peeling and all this other stuff and had to wear a mask to work, they had to cover up all of this, plus this, plus that, to work with all the chemicals and shit. Oh, I was fucked up. Oh, believe me. I was fucked up. And so, you know, if you have to go through your lover's phone to see what they're fucking doing, you don't have a need to have a lover. 
which is why if you're going to be in a relationship and you're jealous or you are insane and constantly trying to figure out what they're doing behind your back, all right, well, you know, these are how people get killed. This is how men kill women. This is how women kill men because they sit here and they think, oh, this motherfucker's cheating on me. Oh, this motherfucker's doing that. Oh, they let their friends get in their ear. And next damn thing you know, somebody winds up fucking dead because we are too insecure in ourselves and in our relationships to actually do what we need to do. So I'm going to tell you, if you got to be, if you love somebody with your whole heart and y'all ain't getting it, you know, uh, my suggestion is simple. Break up or be in an open relationship. I've known people in open relationships and the shit actually works out. So, you know, I mean, there's got to be something to it if if you, like, you know, you lay down boundaries. I, I rely on things like swingers and shit like that. You can Google it. You know, there, there are books about being a swinger. There are shit that used to be on HBO, Real Sex and all that shit, to tell you about swingers. So if y'all know what the deal is and you got boundaries, like, all right, look, I really don't want to share you, but if I ain't pleasing you and you don't want to leave me, it kind of puts us in a fucking conundrum. So, if we become swingers, you pick my girl, and I pick your boy. Now, you don't pick your girlfriend's best friend. You don't do that, unless your girlfriend picks her. You don't pick your best friend to fuck your girl. Because as a man, you know, that's a bad mate. You know, nine times out of ten, if your girlfriend picks your girl for her, her best friend to do it, it's probably because she trusts her best friend to not come back. As a man... You can't trust your best friend to not come back when you ain't at home. Now, I'm sorry to say that, but hey, that's just the way I feel. But in in, in the end, I would put it like this. If I had to have an open relationship with a woman, I would prefer her to be bisexual. That way, I'm the only man she's fucking, and she can have the fucking feel of every lesbian that ever comes her way. I just want to watch. It's just that simple. I just want to watch. I'm okay with that. I don't have to participate. As long as I can watch, I'm good. But there are relationships where this shit does work. There's like the the sister wives dude. I mean, he's got like five wives. He's a lucky motherfucker. I can live with that. You know? As long as I'm the only man in the fucking relationship. But the question is, could the women live with that? I don't know anybody in real life that's more than willing to put up with that. And, you know, they got TV shows for a reason. And, you know, you can watch them until you're blue in the face. And sometimes, you know, I don't believe everything I see on TV. Especially in reality TV. Now, you know, if I watch something like Game of Thrones or some shit like The Deuce or something interesting that involves sex, and as long as there's titties involved, hey, I'm down. But, you know, uh, Sister Wives, you know, they don't, they don't ever really show any of the sex stuff like they did on um, the Bunny Ranch thing. And, you know, that's all cool. But you gotta have an open mind in life. These things right here, they're relationship killers. So if you're so self-conscious about yourself that you have to keep going through your lover's phone and checking out all this stuff on Facebook and all this other stuff, you know, you need to evaluate yourself. You need to check yourself. And before you wreck the relationship, because the relationship could be going great. Motherfucker might not even be cheating on you. You might be looking at other chicks like, okay, I'm gonna um, go home and fuck her brains out. You know, it ain't gonna be that chick, but... If I got a good thing going on at home, I'll be damned if I'm going to ruin it for 15 minutes when I got a lifetime that we can learn shit together. You know, it's not that difficult. Now, we're not going to buy any of those damn sex mannequins or any of that shit because those damn things are a car note. That's the one reason. But the second reason is how the fuck did you explain that when the in-laws come home or when your mother comes home? How the fuck you going to explain that there's a mannequin in your closet? It's got boobs. And when I threw my coat on it, it moaned. Yes, those do, they make those noises now. Hey, I read a lot. So in closing, you got to understand, if you're going to have these things, then you're going to have to deal with the price. And the price with cell phones and you trolling through your lover's cell phone is that somebody's going to see something that they shouldn't have seen. And then they're going to assume shit that they shouldn't assume. And then the relationship is going to come to a brutal end because of idiots. One, don't let people get in your ear. Two, They're not cheating until you catch them. Because if they're flirting or whatever, that's nothing. Especially if you look at the the line and you're in California and this person they're flirting with is in North Carolina. That's a whole lot of goddamn um, flirting. Now, if they flirting and all of a sudden she got a business meeting in North Carolina, you got a problem. Especially if she says you can't go with. Now, 
That's the same thing. All right, my acting career is not taking off. Let's, let's face that fact right now. My acting career is not taking off. But if my acting career takes off, the only way that my woman's not coming with me is if she can't get off of work. Which, if she's a normal person, I could probably go in and talk to the boss and say, hey, look, I'm going on a trip for like a month. What can I do so that my wife can come with me? No. Besides hire her as my manager, what can I do so that my wife can come with me? You know, because she might not want to get into the business. She might just want to be a simple person and live a simple life. And that's cool and everything. But if my acting career ever takes off and I have to go film movies in certain locations, I'm going to want my wife to come with me. You know, most people don't want their wives to come with me because Hollywood has been known to rip relationships apart as... Star Lord and his wife has just proven, you know. Now, me on the other hand, you know, I can't make her come with me, but I can get on her nerve with the phone every goddamn night, and I don't want to do that, you know. I'd much rather her be there with me. So after twelve hours of me working on a set, they were like, "Okay, well, now I can go home to my wife." I probably won't get much love making done because I'll probably be dead tired. But hey, these things happen. Now, if she don't want to come with me. She's not going to be able to trust me because the first thing she says, oh, what kind of movie is it? Oh, it's a kung fu movie. Okay, well, is there going to be any sex in the movie? Are you a star in the movie? Do you get to, have, do you get to play with strange women's titties in the movie? Well, I'm not going to lie to her because I'm sure she's going to read the fucking script. Because, you know, as an actor, look, I'm going to be honest with you. You kind of got to take what you can get until your actual ass is established. All right? I make independent films. A lot of reasons why my independent films have failed is because I couldn't get female leads. And The Dragon's Breath, that failed because the female lead quit the day before we started filming. I had no way of replacing her. And I couldn't teach a dancer who stiff to do Kung Fu. See, the thing about being a dancer is that it's great for dance. But when you're doing a martial art, the only time you need to be stiff is like when you're doing one of those special kicks where you get to hold it forever. Which, in real life, that would be a big fucking mistake. But, you know, in, in, a, in a real fight, you're never going to kick somebody and just hold your leg that far. Especially if they have good recovery. But, you know, for all movie purposes, it's awesome. But, you know, when you're doing these things, if you're going to um do stuff like that, you know, you want your wife to read the script. And if she doesn't like certain things in the script, you know, you can talk to the director. But once you sign that contract, your wife, your job... You belong to that job. It's simple as that. When you sign that contract for that film, your ass is theirs until that film is done. Once production is done, once your check is cashed, you know they're your, you're your, you're theirs until you're finished filming. All right, and that's just the bottom line. If you don't know how this business works, it's probably not going to be for you. It's the same thing if you get a record deal. If they say you're going to make a concert and you're going to travel from New York to Philly to Detroit to Chicago all the way up and down the eastern and middle eastern seaboard, and you're going to end in Tennessee to go back to New York to cut your second album. That's what the fuck you're going to do. Or you're going to go to Atlanta to cut your fucking album. That's what you're going to do. You're not going to do what you want to do. You're going to do what they have obligated your ass to do. You have a concert. You have six cities in 20 days. You have to have travel time between the damn cities. So if they're flying you, they have to pay for that entertainer to get from Detroit to Chicago to Florida to New York to Tennessee back to Atlanta. You see what I'm saying? You're flying. You're zigzagging. If you're going on a tour bus, it's going to take twice as long. So in those 20 days, you know, you may have to drive sometimes. You may have to fly sometimes. And this is how the business works. And if you're not down with that, you're going to be in real big trouble when you discover how the fucking business actually works. So I'm going to close out on stop trolling through your cell phones. You're going to get in a lot of damn trouble. I'm James Cream. She needs to come for number two. Be seeing you.